Hello again, YouTube viewers. I have just finished up my latest hairpin apparatus. This will be the last one I make. This older one, you had to move these clips up and down by hand and remove the shunt bar. Well, I wanted to make one where you didn't have to touch any metal and it combined every option that I've seen. Starting in the back here, here's the shunt bar operated from the front by a lever. Put it on, take it off. Also on each end of the back is the output. In the center is a hair dryer that is operated off of a dimmer switch so you can control the flow of air. This lever in the middle here that you see moving back here operates a magnet. Actually three magnets. In the front here in the lower we have the spark gap adjusters operated with a spring also. And in the back, you can move this thing up and down depending on the size of bearing or ball that you have mounted on glass rods. Let me take this off so you can get a better look at it. These are three millimeter glass rods. There's eight of them. Right now I'm only using six because I found out that too many spark gaps is actually counterproductive in what you're trying to do. Um, these right now are, I believe they're three eighths brass balls with a hole drilled into them so they do mount on the glass rods. Everything is copper on here. I tried to stay true to copper with all my connections. I even had to hand make the copper connections going to everything on this thing. Uh, in the center is a capacitor wheel that holds five capacitors. The other wheel is a matching set. Each you can turn independently. Inside the base of this apparatus is a 15,000 volt transformer, unlike the 10,000 volt one in the old one. And as it comes up through, it comes up on the inside here on each side on the inside that's why I have a protector plate on it um, the outside we're now in the dielectric realm but this comes to my major flaw design the old apparatus has the tubes coming right off the back side of the capacitor with this design I couldn't do that so I had to run a smaller tube going through the top coming all the way up here, attaching to here, where is the start of what we can grab to on the tube. Now there's 10 feet of copper tubing on each side of this. And these grabbers, when you turn this knob here, it rotates by hand. Um, the electricity is, comes through here, comes to the spring, goes onto this plate here, which is also caught on this spring goes down these coils and to the outputs. Now if you want to move these independently, you take this knob on the right side and you pull it out and you can move these independently. Now in the center here is where the air comes out to blow across the spark gap and it's also where the magnet comes out operated by a lever in the front. I'm going to put the glass plate on and show you a little demonstration. Wait, what's going on here? There's small gaps in there. Notice the lights are hardly lit. Okay, now as I come over here and I adjust these down, the lights start to brighten up. Seems like the bigger the gap, the better they light up to a point. I'll run some air past it. It's making the lights flicker a little. Okay, let me turn the air off. Now I'm going to run the magnet past it. 
He's out a little more. Lights are barely lit like this. Now they're lit. Shun far on, shun far off. Oh. Okay, on this demo, I have copper balls in there. There's four of them for five gaps. Um, you're not going to be able to hear me talk when this thing is running, but I'm going to tell you what's going to happen here. On the ceiling, there's all 52 lights hooked up, and it doesn't really light them all until you blow air across the gaps. Now, I notice uh, if the gaps are too big, it'll start cutting out, and there'll be no sparks going across the gaps, and the lights will all be evenly lit, but dimly. Um, I did notice with too large of a gaps, there's a big arc. I'm going to try and make that happen too. That goes from one copper probe up and all the way to the other copper probe. We'll see if I can make that happen as well. All right, let me turn off the lights and we'll get started here. All are relatively lit nicely, but they do blink. Adjusting these all the way out. Okay, now the spark gap is out and the lights are all evenly lit. There it goes. Check it out. That's up a little. I really don't think that's good. <laughs> Feel with a magnet. Oops. Yeah, we're gonna start the fires now. Okay, now I have this hooked to a 75 foot regular house light bulb. All right, let me start this up. It seems to like a smaller spark gap and when I apply the magnet, the light gets brighter. Not much brighter, but a little bit brighter. Doesn't seem to like the wind as much either. The wind makes it flicker. Alright. At least there's no fire on that one. <laughs> 